What's crack like? It's your boy Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know so. And today we're gonna look at some of the hottest, the fastest risers in the 2020 NFL draft. Caveat, you have to be, or at least analysts have to think that you have a first a shot at the first round. So I'm gonna be including guys that are right now being projected in the first round and some uh some other mocks. But uh yeah, go ahead, hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying the content and Come on, bro, and subscribe. We're almost there. We're almost at a thousand. We're doing a great job. But let's go ahead and let's kick off week nine of the Scout Report with an honorable mention. I'm going to talk about uh, LSU's edge rusher, Clavon Chazon, because the guy's put up a pretty decent year, but he's got great tools. There's a lot to like about him as a prospect, but his injury history, he's already missed two games this season, and he missed all of last year. I think that'll I think that'll put him out of the first round discussion in which is actually a pretty deep uh, edge rusher class. So sorry, Clavon Chase on you didn't make the list, but I'm giving you all 10. So let's start at 10. Kenneth Murray linebacker at Oklahoma athletically. Yes, this guy can be a first round pick. He is a great sideline to sideline line linebacker. I don't think he's as he's not on the level of Isaiah Simmons from Clemson, but he's not that far behind. The only the biggest concern I have, he is severely lacking as a playmaker. But everywhere I like see sources say that teams are very high on Kenneth Murray, and I, I get it, dude. He's he's extremely athletic. Now let me tell you, the linebacker position it's so hard to project. So he, here in these team interests, it really helps kind of narrow down where a linebacker prospect should probably be taken. Right now, he's on my on my board. He's a fourth round product, but I mean he could easily elevate to the second or third round based on how how high teams are on him but i've seen a lot of mock traps include him in the first round so this guy's a hot riser at number nine i got the running back out of georgia deandre swift he is the most complete running back in this draft the guy has 62 career receptions he, he's a great pass catcher he has 18 broken tackles after the catch just this year and i mean five rushing or five receiving touchdowns I mean, there's always going to be a running back in the first round where I, I I'm, for me, you got to be an ex, like extraordinary uh, talent at running back to be taken in the first round, like a Saquon. But I could definitely see him slide in into late first round. At number eight, I got the offensive interior Creed Humphrey from Oklahoma. The man's right now at center has been unmovable. This guy is challenging Tyler uh, Badaz as uh, the top center in this class. And I could see him definitely sneak into the first round in the like in, in, in the late first round. At number seven, I have Tyler Wallace, receiver out of Oklahoma State. This guy has great catch and run ability. Just look at his highlight this past week against Iowa State. It is, dude is disgusting. Um, he could be a little better at the contested catch, but he's got the speed to be a great vertical threat. He has uh, amazing ability to play at the slot at the next level. And I think this is a guy, another dude that can sneak into that first round. And at six, I got the edge rusher, Terrell Lewis from Alabama. He's been a force. He's been a monster. He had six quarterback hurries just this week against Arkansas, which I know, okay, uh, it's Arkansas. It is what it is, but he has been a constant force for Alabama. He's got a great build. He's got huge upside. Definitely can see this guy sneak into the first round. At number five, I got cornerback. I got Paulson Adebo out of Stanford. I know he had a tough little run right there, uh, right around, um, well, I guess especially in that Central Florida game, but he has turned it around. He had a baller of a game at the beginning of the year against Northwestern, and these last three games, he has been hot. He's got great size. He's long. He's physical, and he's a playmaker. He allowed a touchdown just this past week, but he had two interceptions to make up for it. Now, he's really turned to that, that corner, and I definitely think he can be in that discussion for uh, first round. And then four, I got the defensive interior, Raekwon Davis. I know, I know, everyone it, everyone and their mom's high on this guy. I got him projected as a third rounder because he's kind of plateaued as a pass rusher. He's an elite, long run defender, but he has, yeah, he doesn't really offer too much in the pass rush department given his great physical tools. Now, the last month, he's kind of turned that corner as a pass rusher, but how long will that last? Like I said, he has the tools to be a first rounder, and he probably will be. At number three, I got Jedrick 
Wills out of Alabama. Another Alabama guy, but he's the last. Don't worry. Now, this guy, he didn't allow pressure at all. Granted, it was Arkansas. I know. I get it. But he has been the most elite run blocker this season. I think definitely there's going to be some teams, especially in that later first round, that are really going to really going to love him and he has just been impressive at number two i got edge rusher out of penn state yatir gross matos elite length great burst and he's been so much better than he was last year he's filled in a lot of his frame he has at least three pressures in every game this year and he was dominant versus michigan that whole honestly that whole defensive line was dominant i mean windsor and um what is it awe they were all just destroying Michigan State, but he has looked great this year. Definitely can see him slip into the late first. And at number one, I got a guy who wasn't even on my, uh, I didn't even include in my last draft, a guy that I really didn't know about till last week. I got offensive tackle Austin Jackson from USC. Now, granted, I mean, I'm constantly increasing how many prospects I look at throughout the year, or yeah, throughout this season, and I mean, just today, I was looking up uh, how to evaluate lawn snappers. So, I mean, I'm constantly adding prospects. But this was a guy that kind of caught me off guard because I was looking at Friday night. I was looking at Colorado versus USC. And I was looking at PFF's grades. And I was like, man, this Jackson kid, he graded really well. So, I looked at his season grades. I was like, man, he's been pretty solid this year. And then I went back to the Notre Dame game because I was like, oh, man, I wonder if... Uh, Okawara, another first likely first round talent, uh, matched up against them, and the Jackson shut Okawara out. Granted, Okawara has kind of been up and down this year, but still very impressive. This guy's very athletic. He came into school at 255, now he's at 310, but he's still ridiculously athletic. The technique, it's not all there yet, but like athletically, he can make up for his missteps, his mistakes. It's Honestly, it's crazy. And then, I mean, I was looking at some of the some of the other sources saying that a lot of teams pegged this guy as a sure first rounder. So, yes, he is my fastest riser because he wasn't on my board yet. So, congratulations, Austin Jackson. But that's it for the video. Go ahead, do the YouTube thing. Much appreciated. Much obliged. I'm going to have a 2020 first round mock draft coming out next Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. And I'm not even going to. I'm just going to go with the current draft order. I'm not even going to play that game where people hate on me because I think their team sucks. Which is not true. I don't think your team sucks. But yeah, I'm going to do that every two weeks. So every odd week, I'm going to have a new mock draft out. And yeah, man, this has been a crazy year. And I look forward to uh, seeing more of it. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. Later.